We wanted to start strong uh, with something that we all found a lot of delight and joy in. And we're going to talk about DC 20. So you guys may remember from our Gary Khan adventure, uh, we got to hang out with the dungeon coach and the game system that he is developing. Uh, since that time, we've had Alan as a guest on ADHD 20. We've been on his show. Fitz has been working on uh, the alpha of this. If you want to kind of talk about DC 20 for a couple of minutes, Fitz, and, and what it is for those who are just now hearing about it. Put you on the spot. Uh, uh-huh. yeah, put me on the spot when Matt real really Matt is the one who caught us on to here. DC twenty. But it's it is, you know, the dungeon coach's um reaction to five E both as a way to fix things that he he wants to fix and create a system that he thinks works best as well as being a response to the OGL, um, I'll call it a crisis because it gave all of us existential crises in the process. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And, uh, you know, in the past, what, eight-ish months, because I think OGL was back in January, I would say of all of the new systems that we've seen people come out with as a response to that, his is absolutely coming to the top of the pack as far as being the most unique, inventive. but also yeah. the best, yeah, the most inventive as well as the most complete. There have been some other yes. systems out there that we just, you can, you see the holes, you know, and he is actually doing a really great job in a very quick amount of time with coming up with what I think is going to be a rad as hell, uh, in Tay's words, um, <laughs> <laughs> system. Evan, so so Matt, Fitz, and I all got to play it at GaryCon. Evan, as this was your first time, and we had yeah. hyped this, and that's always dangerous when your friends yeah. rave for months <laughs> about something. So, yeah. Evan, what was your you know experience? Did it live up to the hype? What'd you think? Yeah, um, it was. So this was a true play test. It, we we spent a large chunk of the time with Alan just explaining the rules, especially to me as the person who had never played it before, and. Really, through all of that, I was everything he was saying, I was so impressed with how thoughtful it was, how he took things that we all scratch our heads over with 5e. And we're like, why? Why is it that way? Why, how could this be better? That was my first impression was, man, he has thought about this so much. And yeah. it was and really first cool. First of all, he has um, entered the chat. Say hello. Dungeon hey! Coach hey! Hey! Hello, friend. Hey! <laughs> Welcome. Like, I think we all want to spend five minutes inside of Alan's brain because the, the mm-hmm. rate at which it works is ridiculous. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Super uh, impressive. And unlike Candela Obscura with zero amount of D20s, not one, not two, but four D20s. Uh, at maybe least. Maybe five. Yeah. Maybe, maybe five. five. I mean, like, just <laughs> so it's like, um, you know, he, he knew. He just, he knew. Uh, he knew my. Yep. He saw me. I feel. I felt seen. Yeah. <laughs> I knew the minute that the ranger was going to be a uh, marshal and not a magic class. I was like, yeah, that's it. That's all Evans. he needs to sell. Yes. Him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. That's the kind of thoughtfulness that I'm talking about. Why are rangers yeah. just by default have magical abilities? Like that's a subclass that that you choose. That's a track that you go down, maybe for sure. But at the at your base, you're just a person in the woods. You're just a masterful person. You're just a, yeah, you're just some schmo. Anyway. Uh, wow. Matt, your, <laughs> your yeah. thoughts as the one who introduced us to this wonderful uh, uh, human? I mean, he is a wonderful human. You are a, you are a wonderful human, Alan. You really, truly are. We, uh, yes. we just, not just playing the game with you and that last night, and no, we knew that you were exhausted. I mean, he, you, he played with all these people for like, uh, you know, two, three days straight, and then you, and then we hung out the, the day after, and 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 we got to, you know, dish on our Strahd theories, theories of Strahd. <laughs> but here's what here's what I loved. Um, I, I just, you know, I was stunned at how much you had gotten done since March. Just blown away. I I loved all the additions. I I loved the the cementing of things. Um, it still has that spark and that energy and the uh, the excitement. I feel like it still for me is going to be that perfect middle ground in some ways between people who do not like the uh, rules light 
and people who do not want Pathfinder. I just think it, it just has so much breath and and the, the ability to dance the dance with um, uh, the dance between social encounters, combat encounters, any kind of encounter, role playing into combat just is going to feel like. Well, I mean, it's going to feel like those video games that came out, like, uh, you know, the first ones that the cut scenes were seamless. I, I'm, I'm thinking about stuff like. Um, the Last oh, I don't know. The Last of Us. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. Like The yeah. Last of Us. Just like it feels that. And that's what I want from an RPG. I want to know where mm -hmm. I am. I want to be able to grow. I want five D20s. And and our man, <laughs> yes. uh, the Dungeon Coach, is giving us all of those things. I know you've got a lot to do. We 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 here at uh, the Biv Bro Show, Bivens Brothers Creative, uh, pledge our allegiance to you and and <laughs> and want to help in every way that we can to get you know to get this thing off the ground and and really make it a as great make as possible. Dominate more people the need world. to play. Yeah, more people dominate. need to play. And if it's okay, can I highlight yes. something that I felt was. Um, extremely satisfying from that game. Yeah. Um, one thing that he had, which I've never seen done before. Yes, I, you know, we've seen people doing skill challenges, you know, in like chase scenes or something like that, where you're not going to enter initiative because you don't want to spend two hours just like running away from some goblins, right? But you want it to have stakes. And so back in March, we played through a, like a dangerous sort of semi social encounter that was out of initiative. Basically, you just had to sort of explain how you got through this town, right, mm -hmm. without being noticed or without incurring issues. This yeah. time he did something interesting, which was having a non-initiative combat encounter. Yeah. And yes. the way that that worked of if you didn't meet the skill check, you were going to take a little bit of damage and like the trade off there felt yep. really balanced and we didn't spend an hour yes. and a half going through draining a ton of resources and yeah. out of game time going through mm -hmm. what was supposed yes. to narratively be just a small bump in the road. So I really liked having that combat encounter as an alternative to a yeah. full combat, which should be satisfying against a bigger, bigger character, bigger character, um, situation so that was and then the way that we entered initiative so yes. good so good so good so original just so original. so great yeah mm -hmm. yep. the way that it worked was we didn't just roll a d20 and add your initiative bonus that was not right. how it was done you had you to could, explain but you could sure yeah. but yeah. you had to explain what are you doing <laughs> right. in this moment i you know i'm I'm going to turtle, right? So great. Then I'm going to add my my strength or something to it because I'm I'm hardy and prepped or whatever. Or, you know, whatever it is you're doing in the seconds before combat starts, it's a skill check for the matching that skill. Thing. And that's your initiative. And just... <laughs> I, I do want to say this. This is what's interesting. And this is why we feel like we're backing the right horse. Uh, with with DC twenty, uh, sorry. Uh, here's here it is, like the fact that our friend Tay has heard that Candela Obscura is so similar to the Forge in the Dark system. Again, no, God, I can I cannot imagine building my own system. So I I I do not look at that as as something that is bad or should not happen. I mean, these are rules out in the world and they are free and they are, you know, they are open, right? They're open to be to be used here. But what Alan is doing that is so unique and special is that he also is borrowing from other games, you know, and and from other creators that he knows and he respects and are at the top of the list. For example, that uh, the idea of slotting enemies into initiative manually. That is not something that he's necessarily come, come up with, but the way that he utilizes it feels special and unique, right? Uh, and, and that is just, it's just so much more meaningful when when you pull together the things that that you you know have been out in the world, 
but you're like, I, I can put them together in, in such a way that, that it still feels fresh. That's, mm -hmm. that's strong. That's strong. Well, and yes, and to that, my big reaction to getting to play it back in March and then again now is just how much this really can be so flexible around the edges. It can give everybody in the party, even if everybody in the party has different things that they like about role playing games, it can be satisfying and fulfilling for all of us. So yeah. it can give those of us who really, really, really want to hardcore combat those satisfying, big, fat, juicy hits that make you just feel like you wailed or for those people who would prefer to buff or set up, tee up, all of those different things, it can give you incredibly effective ways to move about the board and, and tether the party together. Uh, I normally don't play the buff character. I normally play the I want to wail on you and just smack the <laughs> out of you. <laughs> And <laughs> what? This is brand new information. But I, I went paladin, you know, for this one. And, and the end got to, like, I could see the wheels turning on what Fitz was planning on doing. Alan, of course, came in with the assist on some, here's what you could do. And it, it, instead of, like, us all independently taking turns, we were able to just juice up one really big turn. And so I love, <laughs> I, I just, I love that. That's my favorite mm -hmm. thing about it, I think, and thinking through it is it can, you know, give it the right level of crunch versus rules light. It can give us the right levels of storytelling and hand waving. So we don't have to spend all this time on, you know, skill checks and challenges, but can still have the mechanics. And then in combat, it can give all of us exactly what we want. We can mm -hmm. all be selfish. Yay. <laughs> well, you can be selfish, but you can also interact with each other more. It's really hard to interact with your fellow players in 5e like trying to yeah. help somebody or like, you know, yeah. just in this last episode of Critical Role, no spoilers, um, two characters wanted to move together on the field. And like just trying to run along next to somebody is impossible in 5e because yeah. of the way the turn order is and everything like that. Whereas yeah. in this sort of situation, it's much more flexible and easy for you to interact with your fellow players in the moment and give each other help die or you know, uh, hand things off. It just, it's a it's the whole system in its entirety is more flexible, including down to the minutia of being able to, you know, help and aid or, or benefit off of what your fellow player did four seconds ago. Yeah. Yeah. The last thing I just wanted to add was all this thoughtfulness that we're talking about, all these things that have changed that are kind of taking the processes of 5e, making it better, making it smarter, or coming up with something more totally different and original. All of it, um, for me, was in support of the story. And I feel like if you are a min-maxing kind of person, yeah. that, that's not to say that you're going to feel yeah. railroaded into like, now I've got a role play. It, you're going to be satisfied by how the game is going to run smoother. But if you are like our crew and you really value role playing, then all of these things open up the opportunity to yes. for you and the GM to tell a more compelling story and the mechanics Sorry. support that. And I, I, I just can't stress enough how impressed I was. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to because we could talk about <laughs> DC 20 for hours and we know that. Okay. And Alan, we see you when you say things like this hasn't been play tested yet, okay? Um, <laughs> we see you. Uh, and then we can come back to this and do a whole ding ding show if we want to, y'all. That's true. Um, With any of these any of these things that we're wrapping up, we would, yeah, if anybody wants to see more of any of this, we can talk about it because we were yeah, there. Before we take the flea action to move on to the next topic. <laughs> Um, yeah, we can nice, nice inspiration for Fitz. Endless inspiration. Flea action. Fitz, what are, what's your what's your final parting shot? Um, yes, please more. Yeah. You know, it's in all seriousness, between it, it just keeps getting stronger. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it it's one of those things where you get um I, w I was so worried after March that like it was gonna lose its shine and sparkle and you know, get all corporate and then I'd hate it, but it just gets better. <laughs> it's like a fine cheese or wine. Every time we, we see it, DC 20 yeah. just gets better. Yeah. Damn the man. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh,